Hello guys and welcome to the first day of Vlogmas. We are doing Vlogmas this year. It is going to be on this channel. I am going to be vlogging or doing a movie video every single day until Christmas. So if you wanna check out what is coming up this month, make sure that you subscribe, thumbs up. There's also gonna be secret giveaways throughout Vlogmas. So it's gonna be a lot of fun. Make sure that you join. Okay, so the first video that I watched this month and I didn't watch a ton, I only have 10, but most of them are pretty memorable, or at least I have some very intense things to say about them. And the first one is Paranormal Activity Next of Kin. So I'm not the biggest fan of the original Paranormal Activity movies. I'm not, I haven't seen all of them in the series. I've seen the first probably three and they're okay. It's not my kind of horror necessarily, which is why I think I really liked this movie because it felt so different. It wasn't just like, ooh, we put cameras up in the house or ooh, we're tracking through a laptop. It was like we're making a documentary, which gives us a reason to have these cameras. And there was like a genuinely spooky, tense moment, specifically where she was first going into the bedroom. And I just like actually legitimately liked this movie. And if you didn't like that opinion, you're not gonna like this next one either. I saw the woman in the window. Now, if you were around watching movie reviews when this first came out, you would know that nobody liked it. And I won't say that this is a perfect movie, and I will say that I watched this while I was high, but I liked it. My standards for movies are a little lower when I'm high, mainly because I think I'm a fucking genius when I'm stoned. I'm just sitting there like, I'm like in their head right now, like it's crazy. For me, having a movie where you don't know kind of what's reality or what's being made up in someone's head, did this really happen, is she being fooled, it worked. And then we watched 2012, the same night that we watched Woman in the Window, and I, haven't ever seen this movie all the way through. There's amazing cities just crashing down. There's like such close calls. Like I love in these movies how time is essentially meaningless, right? You have the countdown like it's gonna hit in three, two, one. And then meanwhile, there's a scene that's like 20 minutes long of somebody just like maneuvering through all these little tiny spots. And I really like this movie. It's brainless and it is entertaining as hell. My fiance and I watched The Ring because he had never seen it and I haven't seen it in years. I like this movie. I like the acting in the movie. I like the storyline in the movie. And I do like the kind of like blue overtone of everything. It's very rainy, it's very depressing, it's just very cold. It never through the movie gave me any feelings of tension or of like, God, something's gonna happen. And yeah, I get that feeling from significantly worse horror movies, for sure. But I also, it's something that I look for in horror. Can we also just talk about how intensely creepy the child is though? Like, I don't think Scary Movie 3 was far off in their parodying of the whole ring thing. That kid is creepy as shit. For the first time ever, I watched The Green Inferno. <sighs> I, for so long, did not want to watch this movie because you read the blurb and it is essentially about this group of college activists and they go to fight against forest development and then they get taken hostage by a cannibalistic tribe. And that to me, no bueno. I don't like cannibalism or like torture porn. It is not my thing. I don't do the Saw movies. It's all very intense but it was so funny. <laughs> the tribe was actually so funny because you just got to see how this is such a like part of their life. Like you have these people in this wooden cage with these fucking magic arrows that knock them out immediately and they're freaking out. And then you have this tribe that's just like going about their day as if like the people here are chickens or cows that are there for slaughter and to sustain the whole tribe. I'm honestly glad that I watched it because it was a movie that I did not want to see based off of the blurb. My fiance picked it and I ended up really liking it. This movie, 
Ghostland or an incident in Ghostland. I was expecting off of the blurb that was on Netflix, like the like three second of the movie that you see, I was expecting B-list, shitty acting, like predictable horror. And what I got was a fucking ride. <laughs> so I'm just gonna read the blurb. A mother of two inherits a home from her aunt. On the first night in the house, she and her 16 year old daughters fight murderous intruders. 16 years later, the daughters reunite at the house and that's when things get strange. Just, I didn't see any of what else was happening coming. Like I truly was just like, oh my God, like the house is haunted from the bad vibes or something. It's a vibe ghost. I will just say if you are somebody who cannot watch scenes of torture or implied sexual assault or unwanted touching, this is not the movie for you. This is a movie that I was watching while I was folding laundry and editing thumbnail pictures because I thought it would be good background noise. And it was a movie that I, I genuinely had to close my laptop and put away the laundry and just sit there and just like, what the fuck? <laughs> like my heart was genuinely racing at some points and I haven't had such a physical reaction from a movie since I saw the new Blair Witch movie like a year ago and it was just the end scene and it really freaked me the fuck out because it was very claustrophobic and it had my heart going and this very similar if you want something incredibly disturbing to watch this is a good one. Then we got into some comedy movies here. Long Shot. This was a movie I had been wanting to see for a while now. It's a movie that features Seth Rogen and Chalice Theron. And let's see, she's running for president, essentially. And Fred Flarsky is a journalist who becomes her speechwriter. They grew up together. And it's just a funny movie. Like, it's, it's a definitely like Seth Rogen level funny, which kind of gets me. It tickles my funny bone. And I enjoyed it. I really liked it. I thought it was funny. I think that Charisse Theron is a really underrated comedic actress. I think that her timing is really good. And I thought the chemistry, although not my immediate choice between her and Seth Rogen, it was good. We would all fuck Seth Rogen. And then I watched 21 Jump Street, once again, a little stoned. And this movie is just so funny when you're high. <laughs> and it's also so funny to see Brie Larson in this role because I really believe that she was like a high school student. Like she kind of just embodied it for me. She seemed shorter for some reason. And then you see her in Captain Marvel and you're like, you're a full grown adult. Like what was the time between those movies? Seven years. Okay, that's enough time to like, become an actual human being. And then I watched the Jonas Brothers family roast and I didn't think that anybody was like that funny except for Pete Davidson and uh, Sophie Turner. Sophie Turner is just the kind of cool that I think we all intend to be. Like her career is amazing. She as a person seems to be amazing. Her sense of humor is just so on point. The fact that Pete Davidson was making fun of the fact that Joe Jonas would never make Sophie come and she was like, you got that right, my guy. Like it's just, she's the kind of person that we all want to be friends with and also be. And then lastly, once again, a stoned watch because don't judge me, I'm an adult. All right, I watched Midsummer mainly because first of all, Cooper had never seen it. Second of all, I had seen this before, but it was like a really grainy, shitty version of it. And I said that the next time I saw this movie, I wanted to watch it high because the characters are stoned through most of the movie. And I will say, if you've seen this movie sober and you also partake in marijuana, if it's legal where you are and you are of a certain age, I would say do it because I just like, I got a whole new appreciation for the movie, for the motivations. Like I said, when I'm a little, I, I feel like I'm a fucking genius because I can like slither into people's heads and like feel what they're feeling in movies. Maybe it's just because I'm not a super <laughs> empath when I'm not high, but oh my God, it's just so good. Not a lot happens in it for the runtime, but you never feel bored because the character, especially the main character, is just so well developed and you're so interested in the journey that she takes because she's gone through so much and it's like things just keep piling on. And the one scene with the cliff, 
I just got a whole new appreciation for that watching it because like I was just going into myself being like, oh my God, she was so traumatized from the thing that happened with her family. And now she's sitting through this, watching this as well, how traumatizing. And then she's reaching out for support and she's just being told to go off on her own. And it's just like, oh my God, the ending was justified and I love her smiling. And it was just, just a good movie. But that is it. Let me know what your favorite movies are, what you've been watching this month. And also make sure that you subscribe because we are uploading every single Day. All right, guys, I love you so much, and I will see you very soon. Bye.